All right, hey everybody. This is gonna be just talking through my new game, uh, or a prototype of it at least. Microme Management is the name. This is actually my very first prototype. I did what I typically do when I, I made my prototype too nice, and so I'm gonna to have to go back and change a lot of things as the game develops, but this is how it looks right now, and um, it's playing pretty well. And I wanted to talk through and give kind of a teaser of how the game plays, because a few people have uh, been asking and seem interested in, in the gameplay. So uh, in micromanagement, you are competing with the other players to get points. And you get points mostly by building developments in your empire of Microme. And uh, you can see the developments are worth various victory points. You can also get victory points by defeating enemies. Most of them give you some form of gold and maybe even some victory points. And the way you do that is by buying essentially the contract for the development from the market. So these are all available to be purchased. The costs for these are actually a graduated cost. So this costs two gold, three, four, and five. And as you take from the market, the rest of them slide down and you repopulate the market, uh, but these get cheaper as they slide to the right. So what you would do is you pay the appropriate amount of gold, you take the contract, and you have a couple options. You can put it right into your projects area, which is below your player board, and then you can build it from there. And the way you build it is by spending the appropriate attribute by playing cards from your hand. So this, that symbol there is for industry and you need to hit industry nine. And so what I would do is I would go over to my hand and well, let's see, this guy gives me industry or culture so I can play him. You can play the powered up version of these cards by spending resources. So these are the resources, uh, stone, iron, food, and water. And then gold is, it can be treated like a wild resource, but gold is, is a lot more precious than that because you're using it for different things in the game. Um, the main thing is buying contracts for these developments and also buying advanced attributes that go into your deck. These are more powerful than the ones in your starting deck. You get 16 starting attributes in your deck and four of each, I guess, suit you could call it. Um, so there's industry, culture, technology, and military. So military cards are typically red. I forget what color green is. Industry is typically gray and culture is typically two. I think technology is green then. Uh, so I was going through how you, how you work these, um, building and development. So I could play this if I could get to industry nine by playing various cards and powering them up with resources. So I could, let's say I had, um, one stone resource. I could put that on this card and then I get to do the powered up version of it since it's uh, the resource of the appropriate color. Let's say I could get to that, then I can put this out in my development wherever I want, as long as there's um, it's adjacent to an existing development, or uh, as long as there's not an enemy token in that space as well. So like, I could put it right here if I wanted. You start out with territories covering this map. Most of them are blank, some have enemies on them, kind of on this northern half. And then some have some small benefits, like if you end your movement there, you can get some iron. So the other option when you buy a contract is you can kind of save it for later and you would put it into your discard. So then when you shuffle up for the next round, you would run into that contract for that development again uh, in hopes of having what you need to play it out. And the reason you might want to do that is say I put this in my projects area. Uh, and I can't actually get it out this turn. For every turn, um, for every project in your project area at the start of a turn, 
you have to take some strife into your hand. Uh, and so you keep having to do that until it's built or until you discard it. So what's strife? These are strife cards, they're all the same. And it's basically deck bloat. Um, so it does two things. It, it bloats your deck, it goes into your discard, and so you run into that, and then um, you just, you're drawing it into your hand and it, it doesn't offer you anything. You can discard strife, but it, it still hurts you for that hand. And then at the end of the game, it's worth minus three victory points during scoring. You can get rid of strife in a few ways. Um, one of the main ways without getting too fancy is you can spend culture to eliminate a strife in your hand. And I'll talk through the other way, but the other way you can um, get bloat into your deck is these loan cards. Uh, so gold is kind of hard to come by. There's only a few ways to get it. Uh, the two main ways are here at your capital. So everybody starts with a capital. You can take the tax action, which means you take a strife card into your hand, and then you gain one gold for every population you have. You track your population down here, and you get population from buildings like these uh, that increase your population bonus. So that that's pretty good if you have a way to clear that strife and if you have enough population to make that fairly efficient. Uh, but you can also borrow. So you can take up to two of these loan cards into your hand and you gain two gold for each that you take. But the only way to get rid of loans, typically, is you have to pay them off. So you get two gold when you take a loan, but you have to pay three gold uh, to trash the card and remove it from your deck. And they are, I think I'm going to change that to minus four during scoring, so they're pretty penalizing at the end of the game. So that's how you get developments out. What do you do with them when once they're out there? So this game is kind of a, it's an engine builder in addition to being a deck builder. And the way you run your engine is by moving your leader. This is just from a different game, this uh, miniature. But uh, you move your leader around dropping these influence tokens. And what you can do with these influence tokens is various things. All of these developments, um, I think every development has at least one action you can take on it. So some of them, the turn that you drop the influence token on it, you can drop an influence token on any development that you move into. So this lightning bolt means the turn that you drop the influence token on it, you have the option to take this action. Uh, this asterisk here means you spend the influence token, which means flipping it to its red side. Uh, so then I can take that action if I spend that influence token here. But some of them have uh, a different kind of action, which means you have access to this action as long as there's just a readied influence token on there. And the other thing you can do with most developments is most developments have these icons over here that produce resources. So it's another option for spending the influence and you get to gain those resources. So that's one iron and one stone. I would come over here and I'll take an iron and a stone and put it in my personal supply. At the end of your turn, all of your spent influence tokens come off the board. And then you would have to find a way to get them back onto the board. And how you do that is you move around. So you can drop an influence token as long as there's not a ready or spent influence token there already. Uh, as long as you are in the space. And so moving around looks like playing a card for movement. So let's say I play that card for movement. I drop one of these movement tokens on here, and this tracks how many movement points I get from every card that I play for movement. And that is determined by your movement bonus. Uh, and I'll talk through the bonuses here, but you start the game with two movement per card that you play for movement. So I'd set this to two and then Let's say I want to move here, and I want to drop an influence token, and then that brings me down to one, and let's say I want to spend that last one to get here and drop an influence token there. Uh, so your player board down here gets improved by, so these are your attribute bonuses and your population. I already talked through population, uh, but these are upgraded by playing developments that have these 
bonus icons in the bottom right corner. So you can upgrade your culture here. Uh, what else do I have out? Technology. I showed you population. Uh, do I have a military building? Yes, I do. That would move my military. So you get to move up on these tracks when you play those buildings out. And so all these give you different... Um, it gives you like advantages during the game. So population has... It, it has synergies with a few different cards, but mainly what it does is it makes your tax action quite a bit more efficient. You get more gold. Culture makes your festival action at your capital more efficient. So if you spend an influence token here, you can pay one gold to trash strife from your hand equal to your civilization's culture. Technology gives you more influence tokens, which can be valuable if you have an engine out here that really wants to have a bunch of influence tokens on the board. Industry upgrades your movement bonus, which is this. So let's say this was all the way up at four for every card I play for movement. I would actually get to spend four movement points. And military increases your hand size. So you go through your deck five times. Here's the round tracker board. Uh, at the end of round five, I know I have more spaces here than I need that will be updated. <laughs> I didn't know how many rounds it was going to go until I played a few games. Uh, so at the end of round five, you would tally up your total points from enemies defeated and from developments and the person with the most points is the winner then well but you have to remember go through your deck and minus all of the negative points that you got from strife in your deck and loans still in your deck i think the last thing i didn't talk to that i talked through was enemies you spend military to defeat enemies you must get to the shield value in military and it's optional to get to the attack um, value in military uh, for uh, to defeat the enemy. So if I spend four military only, I still defeat this enemy, but I have to take three attack. If I spent five military against this enemy, I would only have to take two attack. And uh, you take attack, it just means taking strife into your deck. All right, I think that covers it. Please follow this project. Thanks, guys.